welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. <laughs> Moreover, that we much did long to see you. The need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? So I call it, since nor the exterior nor the inward man resembles that it was. But it should be more than his father's death that thus hath put him so much from the understanding of himself I cannot dream of. I entreat you both that, being of so young days brought up with him, and since so neighbored to his youth and humors, that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time, and so by your companies to draw him on to pleasures, and to gather from him so much as from occasion as you may glean, whether aught to us unknown afflicts him thus that opened lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, he hath much talked of you, and sure I am there are not too many yet living to whom he more adheres. If you will show us so much gentry and goodwill as to extend your time with us a while, to the supply and profit of our hope, your visitation will receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. Both your majesties, by the sovereign power you have of us, put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreaty. Uh, we both obey, and here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our services freely at your feet to be commanded. <sighs> Thanks. Rosencrantz and gentle Guildenstern. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Guildenstern. <laughs> and gentle Rosencrantz. And I do beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. Heavens, may our presence and our practices be pleasant and helpful to him. Aye, amen. The ambassadors from Rowan, my good lord, are joyfully returned. Thou still hast been the mother of good news. Have I, my lord? I assure you, my good liege, I hold my duty as I hold my soul, both to my God and to my gracious king. Mm. And I do think, or else this brain of mine hunts not the trail of policy so sure as it hath used to do, that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that, that I do long to hear. She, she tells me, sweet queen, she hath found the head and source of all your son's distemper. I doubt it is no other but the main his father's death and our or hasty marriage. Well, we shall sift her. My liege and madam, to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night night, and time is time, were nothing but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. <laughs> Your noble son is mad. Mad call I it for to define true madness, what is but to be nothing else but mad? Uh, but let that go. More matter, less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. That he is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity, and pity tis, tis true. A, a foolish figure, but farewell it. Uh, mad, let us grant him then. And now remains that we find out the cause of this effect, or rather say the cause of this defect. For this effect, defective, comes by cause. Thus it remains, and the remainder thus. Prepend. I have a daughter, have while she is mine, who in her duty and obedience hath given me this. Uh, now gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase, a, a vile phrase, beautified <laughs> vile phrase. But you shall hear thus. Um, her celestial white bosom, these, etc. Et Came this from uh, Hamlet to her. Good madam, stay a while. I, I will be faithful. <laughs> Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar. But never doubt I love. Oh, dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best. Oh, most best, believe it, adieu. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him, Hamlet. This, in obedience, hath my daughter shown me, and, and more above hath his solicitings, as they fell out by time, by means of place, all given to mine ear. But how hath she received his love? What do you think of me? As of a counselor, faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. But what might you think? When I had seen this hot love on the wing, as I perceived it, I must tell you before my daughter told me, what might you, or my dear majesty, your queen here, think if I had played the desk or table book or given my heart a winking mute and dumb or looked upon this love with idle sight? What might you think? 
No. I went round to work, and my young mistress thus I did bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince. Out of thy sphere this must not be. And then I precepts gave her, that she should lock herself from his resort, and admit no messengers, receive no tokens. Which done, she took the fruits of my advice, and he repulsed a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, then into a fast, thence to a watch, thence into a weakness, and thence to a lightness, and by this declension into the madness wherein now he raves, and all we mourn for. Do you think tis this? Uh, it may be very likely. I... Have there been a time? I'd fain know that I have positively said tis so when it proved otherwise. Not that I know. <laughs> Take this from this if it be otherwise. If circumstances lead me, I will find where truth is hid, though it were hid within the very center. How may we try this further? You know, sometimes he walks for hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I'll lose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind an heiress, then mark the encounter. <laughs> if he be not in love and fall, and he not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant for a state, but keep a farm and carters. We will try it. Look where sadly the poor wretch comes a reading. Uh, away, I do beseech you both away. I'll board him presently. Oh, give me. How does my good Lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent well, you're a fishmonger. Oh, not I, my lord. <laughs> then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? To be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. Well, that, that is very true, my lord. For if the sun breed a maggots and a dead dog being a god-kissing carrion, have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing, but not as your daughter may conceive, friend. Look to I, it. How <laughs> say you by that? Yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger, still harping on my daughter. Oh, he is far gone, far gone. And truly, in my youth, I, summered, I suffered much extremity for love very near this. I will speak to him again. Uh, what is it you read, my lord? Words. Words, words. Uh, what is the matter, my lord? Between who? I, I, I mean the matter you read, my lord. Slander, sir? For the satirical slave says here that old men have gray beards, that their faces are wrinkled, and that they have a most plentiful lack of wit together with the most weak hands. <laughs> All which, though I most powerfully and potently believe, yet I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down, for you yourself, madam, would be as old as I am, if, like a crab, you could go backward. <laughs> Though this is madness, yet there is a method in it. Uh, will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave. Indeed, that is out of the air. <laughs> How pregnant sometimes his replies are. A happiness that sometimes madness hits on, which reason and sanity could not so prosperously be delivered of. I will leave him, and suddenly contrive the means of meeting between him and my daughter. Uh, my honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, ma'am, take from me anything. I will more willingly part with all. <laughs> Except my life. Except my life! <laughs> Except my life! <laughs> Fare you well, my lord. Oh, these tedious old fools. You go to sing the Lord Hamlet? There he is. God save you, madam. <laughs>